Okay. Part well, two. Uh, a little bit. He just, he lived to be just a month short of 100 years old. Wow. And if it wasn't for the fact that Francine was sick at the time, um, he probably would have lived longer because she, she she took good care of him. She took really great care, made made sure that his medicines were right and all that stuff. But she got sick and she, you know, she couldn't help him too much at that time. But uh, anyway, but he he died, you know. And then there was another another person that you may know. Uh, another guy named Fayard Nichol Nicholas. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Not really. Fayard Nicholas and his brother Harold were the Nicholas brothers. One of the most famous d dancing duos in oh, yes. show business. I mean, yes. they started out on the streets of New York back in... Uh, 1910 or something like that, dancing. Actually, Harold started out first doing dancing to make money uh -huh. to support the family. Then he taught Fayard how to dance. And so they became professional dancers. And uh, I do remember them on the Ed Sullivan show and yeah. shows like that. And then yes. Down to Rio with uh, the movie Down to Rio with, uh, what's your, the one that had all the banana hats? The bananas, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> can't, I can't remember her name. It'll come, uh, It'll come Carmen, Mar was it? Carmen, Carmen yeah. Miranda. Carmen Miranda, yeah, and so forth. She, uh, and they had Pirates of, uh, and a pirate film with Gene Kelly and all that stuff. But anyway, they would, they got started doing that, then they went to Apollo. Which is on 125th Street. In New York. In New York. And uh, he was a great, you know, and the thing was, you could perform at the Apollo, but if you were black, you could not be in the audience. You could not right, sit right, in the back, audience. Yeah. You could not eat there. Right. So, their, so their parents had to sit in the back, and they, the parents were able to eat back there and so forth. Right. And only Fayard and uh, Harold were permitted to go out. And smooths with uh, customers. Mm -hmm. That's because they're the kids and so forth. Anyway. No, so, you sure this wasn't the Cotton Club and not the the Apollo? It was the Apollo. We had the Apollo Theater and... Oh, 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 you, no, you, might, was, you might be right. It was the Cotton Club. It was the Cotton Club. Yeah, you're gone. You, you're getting it. Okay, you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the Cotton Club. Yeah, and uh, but they also appeared at the Apollo, so later on. Mm -hmm. Anyway. And, uh, well, Fayard, you know, they were very famous. They made movies and all that stuff. And then they, they put up with racism and all that stuff. And there was a lot of it back then. A lot of it. And ironically, um, when, I, for, when I met him, he, um, I was working with his, uh, with his, uh, black producer, who turned out to be the biggest con man you could ever want to know. And the guy screwed, the guys tried to screw Fayard and his wife over and all that stuff. And, I, you know, sad. It was really sad. He, was, he got screwed over by whites and he got screwed over, by and, and as late in his life he got screwed over by a black producer that said, then he admired him and he wanted to do all this and all that for him and so forth. But anyway, we were setting up at uh, Shore. We were as up at Ruth Webb's house um, back in 2004. I think it was Christmas party there. And... Um, Fayard was there with his wife, Catherine, and Tom, <laughs> I mean, and it was something else. Fayard was about four, I guess four foot ten, 
dapper, I mean, he dressed dapper all the time, black guy, and he had this five foot ten blonde bombshell <laughs> for a wife, Catherine. They loved each other, they, but it the, was, really was really a character, you know, something else. But they, they loved each other and so forth. Anyway, we were sitting up there. Was, I think it was the same time I met Joyce Lynn, same party. Um, but I, um, I asked Fayar, I said, Fayar, and I got, to, I got to ask you a question. He says, why, Rob? I said, when you were coming, when you and your brother were coming up, you know, you had all this racism and all this bullshit that you had to go through. Um, are you bitter? And he looked at me, smiled. He said, no. I said, why not? He said, being bitter about what's happened in the past is just taken away from the joy of the present and the future. He says, I refused to let what has happened ruin my day today. He says, or the future. So, the past is in the past. The, the day is today, the future is the future. I said, wow. Wow. That just <laughs> blew, blew my mind that he could say that, so forth. Where were you originally from? Uh, originally from uh, Indiana. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, by way of, I got him, came out here in 60 with my family. Served to stay in the Navy, and then I worked in uh, I worked in JPL the Jet Propulsion Lab for ten years, and I worked for Rockwell. Got laid off at Rockwell, and then I was doing things as I said. I was doing photography, and I went and ran into that. Uh, ironic how things worked out. I ran into them to that uh, agent that was uh, nuts. And then that led me to Ruth, and it led me to all these other things, all all the other people that I've met, you know, so forth. Francine, Joyce Lynn, um, and it's it's you know, it's there's some, you know there's some weird things that have happened too. <laughs> I gotta tell, I gotta. There is one. There is this. I don't think I should, I can't mention her name. No, no. But uh, it's not Francine, I'll tell you that. But, um, well, I ran into this actress that I, I know, that I knew, and we tired talking about, you know, parapsychology and things like that, UFOs and so forth. And she started telling me about some of her incidents, her events that she's had, and I've told her about some of the things I've had happen in my life. And I told her about um, some of the things that have happened with my sister. So, <laughs> this is, I. so anyway, she said, oh, I got a boyfriend that's doing a documentary. Oh, so I said, okay, okay. My boyfriend would probably, I would like to interview your sister. And I said, okay, I'll arrange it. So, I, you know, I arranged it. And the gal came up, I mean, with her boyfriend, started talking to my sister, found out their experiences were exactly the same. They had married, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is weird. Their first, the first guys that they married were, had the same names. Uh, they married at the same age. So there was so many coincidences. So many similarities that it freaked both of them out. Uh -huh. So afterwards, after that, they had the one wanted to have anything to do with Sabbath. Anything to do with others, it was just too freaky. Anyway, but that's, 
that was one of the weird things uh, about this that has happened. Uh, now you run a, you you came out of retirement to to help act, manage people, actors again. Well, you? when I when somebody says they need help, I will help them. I do the best I can. Could you name some of the people you're working with now? No, I'm I'm not working with anybody oh, right so, now. So okay, so you. No, I have. As I said, it's. Well, how do people get in touch with you if they wanted to? Do you have a website or anything like that? No, no, no. They, uh, just Facebook? Facebook, you know, Rob Codney on Facebook, or they could, uh, yeah, or they can uh, call, leave a message. Uh, well, they can, they, can, they can Facebook me and so forth. Um, I do what I can. Well, I can, you know, but I am not really, I don't have the connections or something, and things have changed. I keep my ears open as far as the business goes, and things have changed so much, you know. Actually, most, today, people trying to get into business, they have, they have Comcast, I mean, they have, uh, they can get their own sideline, uh, sides, they can get their own things, and so forth, and uh, Actors Access and stuff like that. Uh, they have so many sites they can go to to see what roles are available and submit themselves. And uh, it's, 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 inter it's interesting. Anyway, mm -hmm. anyway, so there's some, as I said, I've got a lot, I've got tons of other stories, you know, so oh. forth. We'll have to yeah. come back another day and do that. Of course, of course. I, uh, and I would love to have you come back and... I'll be glad to come back. I mean, uh, um, I'd love to come back. I could do a show on this black con man that uh, I was telling you about. I could do a show on this crazy, uh, crazy agent that I was telling you about. <laughs> he got, <laughs> he got funny, he got kicked out of the... Roosevelt Hotel. I mean, this right. thing I told you about, uh, right, Spank, yeah, Spanky McFarland and uh, our gang yeah. thing. He, he, was he, Robert Blake there at the, because he was there, a lot of people didn't realize, you know, he was in The yeah. Little Rascals too. No, no he, wasn't, he wasn't there. He wasn't there. And we asked uh, Jackie Cooper. And he didn't come either? He, you know, he was not, you know, nope, he didn't come. But Spanky McFarland came. Spanky, I called him up and he flew out. He came out here from Texas and attended. And then it was shortly after that he passed away. But I mean, we had uh, Tommy Butch Bonds there. And he's a great guy. Yeah, in fact, that's how, that's how Ruth Webb came to come to the, uh, Roosevelt Hotel, right. where I first when I first met her, first met her was because Tommy Bonds uh, told her that this guy was a literary agent and that he was setting up a thing for uh, uh, the R gangs and so forth, and that's why she came there and so forth. Anyway, uh, Tommy Bonds was there. I asked, I don't. Know, I asked Tom. I asked Tommy at the time. I said, "Well, how were how were the blacks treated on the set of the Our Gangs?" And he said, that "How Wallace came in and told everybody." said, everybody is to be treated equal, whether they're white or black or whatever. says, if you can't live with that, then get the hell off my set. Good for him. And that's the way they were treated. They didn't have separate bathrooms for uh, the whites and, whites and the blacks or so forth. And he, um, he said everybody was just treated equally by Hal Roach 
and so forth. It was it was interesting. It sounds it. Yeah. And um so You've got a lot of stories to tell. You're what I'd like me. to do, I'd like to get you and Francine to come. Oh yeah. I keep telling I'll tell Francine I'll go there. Yo, Francine. Francine has, Francine has got some wild stories. Some I know. Stories. I said uh great I mean, stories. She's been around a while and as I said, she's got the talent, the beauty, and she is a very caring person. Yeah. You know. And when, she actually she, when she watches the show she critiques me. Because it's a very, <laughs> and, and I take her advice because yeah. I, I know she's right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can. Uh, you well, I don't. I don't know about Evie because she's not a big fan of Evie. Who else do you have there? Oh, Evie's great. Uh, me and Evie are. Uh, I have some wild stories about about Evie too. <laughs> Evie did about four shows. Uh, here's Ruth Webb. Let me get her. Let me get a close up there. Talent, talent agent Ruth Webb. She was the one that got a little higher. Yeah. There we go. She was. She convinced. Uh, what was it, Jean she Barry? Was a, yeah, she was a, a very lovely looking woman too. Oh yeah, a lot of things. She got. She convinced Jean Barry to take La La Casa de Oh really? Really. He says, "This a guy. This is a play about a, 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 two a, two gay men." And she says, "She told me. She said, Gene, you take it. You're gonna you're gonna be set for life.'" And it became one of his signature performances. You know, the Clash of the Flow. Yeah, it's a big movie. Then and he was very good in that. Right, and then uh, Mickey Rooney. She was in. Uh, no, you can hold it down. Yeah, you know, she was in. You could hold it down in the picture that we got it. Yeah, you know, she was in New York. And this doctor that had a lot of money came up and wanted to invest in a, a show, a Hollywood show, you no, know, a Broadway show. And he got a producer and so forth, and they came up with an idea for this show, show called sort of like the Follies, old time Follies. Mm -hmm. And they came to Ruth and says, "Well, we need this. This is the kind of person character we're looking for." And she says, "I got the perfect person for you." And they said, "Who? Mickey Rooney." And they said, no, he's over the hill, he's an old drunkard. He's down and down, he's a drunkard. And he says, no, nope. he's, give me a chance, it'll be perfect. And I said, okay, we'll give, him, give you a chance. So she and uh, her sub-agent, Sherry Spillane, went down to Florida, found Mickey Rooney. He was doing theater, you know, mm -hmm. restaurant theaters. Or In a theater. Yeah, down there community theater and so forth. They cleaned him up, dressed him up, put him on a suit, took him up to New York, took him in to meet the guy and he just blew them away. And next thing you knew? Sugar babies. Yeah, sugar babies. I remember. Sugar, sugar babies. You know, and he was an, un what a talented actor he was. And then he got Black Fury. No, no, he got, uh, no, not Black, no, what was it, Black Stallion. Mm. She got him the Black Stallion and so forth, and he wrote a book, Life, in his autobiography, Life is, Life is Too Short. He, did, he dedicated a whole chapter to Ruth Webb. Wow. Saying that if it wasn't for her, he would, he would have been dead a long time before, so forth. Anyway, she was a hell of an agent. I remember reading about it in Spillane. That was Mickey Spillane, the writer's wife, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, Sherry Spillane, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, here is the first picture I ever took of Francine. <laughs> Let me get this. I, if you can get it. Can you move it over a little bit? Now, down. There we go. Oh, I had it. Yeah, it's a great picture of her. Yeah, we got the. 
Yeah. Turn it towards G into there you go, right there. Got the glare out. What wow, perfect. Now let me just pan down here so I can get the whole because she is a tall beauty. Well, she is. That is a great shot of her. 1992. It was December 27th, 1992. Really? No, 1993. 1993. Yeah, yeah 1993, yeah. yeah. It was just about, it was a little less than a month before the big earthquake. Yeah. Ah. Okay, we got her. Okay. And let me She'll see. She'll like that one. Yeah. And let me see. I got other. Oh. Who else do I have here? Uh, I don't know if you want to get a picture. Well, Bobby Blake is back in that time. Not really. Not really. I can't blame you. <laughs> um, you can even you can even recognize him, anyways. In yeah. the picture, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who's this? Are we grabbing now? I'm. Let me see. Well, there's Theodore Bikel on this side. Now, the Theodore Bikel was. He's doesn't really. People don't realize how much. He did for the actors oh, when yeah. he was president of Equity. He started Manhattan Plaza. He was a good, great actor and so forth. Still and is. And then I think, yeah. I would love to interview him again. That's Thoria Theodore Bacall, and I think Mart Saul is on the other end. I'm not sure. One of them is Mart Saul. And who's the young lady? Uh, I can't remember. Francine might remember her. Okay. Yeah. And they had Virginia, Virginia Mayo was there too. Uh, but these are all from that, that party. Well, you got a nice collection there. Yeah, well, I got a hell of a lot of other collections too. A okay. uh, hell of a lot of other photos and so forth that I can okay. bring next, next time. Next time. Yeah. But I want to thank you for coming on. And I'll, definitely, I said, definitely, I'll definitely be back. We want to have you and Francine out. To go back, especially the party stories, because eh? I know you two go to a lot of the screenings and parties, and well, we go to a lot of the screenings at the academy and all that yeah. stuff. You know, she's so she's she's an extraordinary woman. You you know, and once my... you once she gets started, you can't turn you won't be able to turn off the camera. Right. <laughs> All right, Bob. Thank, thank you. you. I'm going to thank you very much for having You're me welcome. on, and I look forward to come back and coming back again and being on. Uh, as I said, if I tell, if I I could tell, <laughs> I got some other wild stories to tell you about this town. Okay. Good stories, things that uh, so forth. Anyway, thank you.